Hello and welcome to this lesson on the tune Captain Pugwash. We're going to play this tune on the DG Melodeon and it works really well on this instrument. So let's get started. Uh, before this tune was used for the TV series uh, Captain Pugwash, it was known as the Trumpet Hornpipe, that's its proper name. Um, I remember it from when I was a kid. Uh, we had a, a very sort of crude black and white animated uh, version over here in, in the UK and I used to watch it uh, every week and loved it. Um, we're in the key of G major, no surprise there, and we are counting in fours. So it's all pretty straightforward. So the G row will have all the normal shaped heads on my music and any notes on the D row, the outside row here, will have the diamond shaped heads. We've got a few dagger symbols dotted about on the music. Uh, if you don't know already, when I put those on my music, it means that those notes uh, can be played by reversing the bellows direction. You don't have to repress the button. One thing you need to know is that some of the bars are written and they look like they are a continuous run of quavers. For instance, bar two. Uh, but in fact, the feel I want you to, to adopt there is the dotted quaver, semi-quaver. And that gives you kind of a bouncy feel rather than that very smooth feel. It just looks a bit nicer um, than if you wrote it out with loads of dotted quavers and semi-quavers. But I'll deal with those bars when I come to them, but just bear that in mind. The whole thing is very sort of rumpty dumpty, diddly diddly, not a smooth flowing thing as it may appear from the music. Uh, lots of people do that when they write out pieces of music just to make the whole thing look a bit more accessible. You've got a lot of notes on the push to start with, so I recommend pulling the bellows out a fair way before you get started. Uh, because you may run out of room quite quickly in your bellows if you don't. Uh, this is a Hona Erica, it's sort of a reasonable size. If you've got a small instrument with small bellows, then you may find you need to put it out even further. Um, play the whole thing fairly staccato, and then you should be fine with the, with the air. The first bar is what we call a pickup bar, and we call it bar naught. It doesn't count as a bar one. Bar naught is its name, and it's it's got a single note of D in it. The note D on my melodeon is button three because I've got a fourth button start instrument. That means to say that on my fourth button, on the G row, if I press the button and push in, I've got G. If I do the same thing on the D row, I've got D. If your instrument is a third button start, which lots of instruments are, then the same will apply when you play the third button. So if you play this button here and push in, you'll get a G. You press this button, push in, and you'll get a D. Um, I'm sure you'll know what your instrument is. If you're not sure, well, if you play your fourth button uh, whilst pushing the bellows in on this G row, and it sounds like that, uh, then you've got a fourth button start. If you play your fourth button and it sounds like this, then you've got a third button start. Okay. So our first note is the note D, like I say, comes in on the count of four. So you count one, two, three, four, just a single note there. No bass uh, played behind that, so there's no chord above that, nothing in the left hand, just simply playing that note and you're in. Now straight away, you're gonna to need to move your right hand position. Uh, dotted uh, around the piece of music, you can see down one, up one, down one. What that actually means is that in general, we keep our four fingers on four specific buttons, you know, a particular area of the melodeon. So if I say move down one, you'll move your first finger from here to here. Because when you get to bar number one, the first complete bar, that starts on the note G, which is this note, and fingers two, three, and four will move downwards uh, from there on consecutive buttons. So that's what we mean. So when we get to bar number one, We've got the very distinctive timing, it's a very distinctive feel. Now, what you have there are triplets. You've got two triplets in this bar. What a triplet is, is three notes played where two normally go. So what that means is that the first beat and the third beat of this bar split into uh, three, which is pretty hard to understand, but um, the way to vocalise this is to say, Diddly do, diddly do dee. Diddly do, diddly do dee. So diddly do, 
G, 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 and then G, 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 B. So diddly do, diddly do, D. And that sounds a bit ridiculous, but uh, it may help you get the timing. So that's a triplet. Three notes played where two normally go. I've seen people using different fingers on the same button. They'll play like that. And you can do that if you want, of course. But I don't think it's necessary, personally. I use my first finger like that. Just keep tapping it down. So you've got G, 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 G. G, 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 D. Now the D note, the last note of the bar, is um, two buttons down there, finger three. So finger one on the G, finger three on the D. And in fact, when you play those last two quavers, although they're written as two quavers, like I said earlier, what we've actually got here is a dotted quaver, semi-quaver. So you play those last two quavers, not as written, but as a dotted quaver, semi-quaver. That'll make more sense when we get into the next bar. Let's deal with the bass of that, by the way. We've got the um pa um pa bass, and we play G bass, G chord, G bass, G chord. Okay, so that's twice in the bar. And you play the G bass as you play your first note on the right hand. And once you play the triplet, when you get to that first crotchet G, the sort of note that follows that triplet, that's where you play your pa, which is your G chord. Uh, Button number three, uh, finger number three. And then again, you play the G bass on the first note of the next triplet. And when you play the G that follows that triplet, this time it's a quaver, you play the par again. So you have. And that final note, D, doesn't have a bass with it. And everything's on the push. 